you can come here to file. If you click file, there is this button of share. So if you click share, it's gonna give you uh, this kind of uh, uh, pop-up where it clearly tells you that you could share to a user or group of users or role. So some majority or most of the time, we usually share items in the system using user groups. Why? It's because uh, it, it allows you to, to sort of, you share once, but it gets to be accessed by different people or more than one person. But if at all you think you only need to share it to a specific person, again, you could always uh, look for that person. He or she must be a system user and share it. Uh, uh, that particular visualization. So let's say um, I'm sharing this to so if you just type in a few letters, it will now start uh, giving suggestions of uh, whether it's users or user groups that are available with such uh, uh, letters that you have you have selected. So since it's HIV data, I'll just go and say, okay, I need to share this to, to this uh, admin. And just by sharing that, it's not enough. You need to specify the access level that you want. Either it's a group or a specific person to have towards that particular analytical report. So if at all you wanted to only have the access of view, which means he or she or that group of people, they're going to have only the view access. They won't be able to do any kind of modification or edits to this uh, pivot table. Or if you want that person to have the access to see as well as do the changes, then you could specify the access level to view and edit. So you have to be careful uh, when giving this access level. So maybe I'll just say view only and you click give access. Then you could see now this person has the access to. If you want to revoke the access, you could always say remove access. That means that person will no longer have the access to this pivot table. If you need it to, to be accessible to all users, within the system, then we have this option of all users. If you click that, <clears throat> again, it's always uh, view only or view and edit or no access at all. By default, it's no access. So other members to be able to see this pivot table and access it, then you give it as view only or view and edit. So if I say view only, that means all the users in the system will be able to see this pivot table if they look into it, but they won't be able to do any, any changes. So that is in terms of uh, sharing. Always you need to specify just by selecting a user group or a user, it's not enough. You need to go and further specify the access level, whether to only see the pivot table or see, but also be able to do uh, any modifications. So now we have seen uh, all the functionalities under the data, under the style, under the limit values. We have these other parameters, but it clearly tells you that it's only uh, applies to standard reports only. So we won't uh, go into that. But rather, sorry, we have this legend, which we have not touched at all. And of course, series, we say this, doesn't apply to pivot table. It's only for the charts where you could manage because chart usually display data in terms of series and categories. And this is where you get to do uh, the series and all the management with regards to the charts. So legends, what does it mean by legends in DHS2 world? These are more of color coding, as I said earlier, and we do color coding just to easify the interpretation of, of the information that we are trying to analyze. Remember we said pivot table are mostly and more useful when you're 
looking at a very huge amount of data. So sometimes if I would say, uh, for instance, in this kind of a table, if I were to ask how many, which facilities are probably poor performing or how, which facilities are performing well, it will be tedious to go through each value to be able to tell that. But if you had color coding, you could easily spot the facilities and say, okay, one, two, three are underperforming or they're poor performing and one, two, three, they're performing well. So how do you do to get, how do you do that to get all those color coding in your table? I'll go here and create a, a, a different pivot table. I'll go back, click new, then create a pivot table. Mm -hmm. And this time I'll be using the immunization data. So I'll go to data and look for indicators. I want to monitor the BCG coverage, OPV3 coverage, as well as uh, the DPT3 coverage. So I'll go and select indicator. Again, the indicator group, it's immunization coverage, if you select that, you have uh, this list of indicators. Then my focus is on BCG coverage, you select BCG coverage and DPT3 coverage. And last one is the OPV3 coverage. So I'll select that, hide of course. Then I'll need uh, by last year, I only need data for last year. So I'll go back, uh, by default it's last year already. So if I were to go and specify, I'll go to the period type years and be able to select last, last year. But since it's already selected, that is why it did not appear on the list of available periods. So I'll just go and select last year, then I need my data by districts, all the districts within the training land. So I'll go to unit and do the district. So by picking that and training land is selected, that means it's going to give me a list of all, all the districts within the training land. So I click hide. Now with this kind of arrangement here, will I be able to see the data by district for the last year for the three uh, immunization coverage indicators? The answer would be no. Why? Because we have multiple organization units within the filter. And filter is not always attached to, uh, to, to data, meaning that it cannot break down the information as per the specified org units, but rather it's going to give you a cumulative, cumulative value. So I'll arrange that, rearrange, drag uh, organization unit back to rows and have period to filter. Why? Because I'm only looking at one period, which is last year. So it won't have an impact if it, it's assigned to filter. So I'll click update, and this is how my data looks like. Now, if I want to quickly say with BCG coverage, which district is performing well and which is not performing well. With the way the table is, I'll have to start looking at the specific figures, try to compare across all these districts. But with legends, then I could easily tell. So to add the legends, of course, you have to go to options and select legend. Now you need to say use legend for chart colors. And of course, we have two ways. We have the legend style and we have the legend type. So the legend style is more or less to say or to specify where should this color coding be applied? Is it the background at the background? I mean, the color should be, should be applied and act as a background color or you need the color to be attached to the text. So it all depends on, on what you want. So let's go with the first option, then we'll see how it looks like with the second option as well. But under the legend type, you also have uh, to specify whether you need to use predefined legend per data item or select a single legend for the entire visualization. What does this mean? 
So when you're creating these indicators in the configuration part, there is a place where I could assign a legend. So if at all you have the indicators assigned with that specific legend, then it's when you could use predefined legend per data item because each indicator has been assigned a, a legend to it. But if not, then you have another option of selecting, select a single legend for the entire visualization. That means you could go and specify the legend that you want and it will be applied uh, to the all indicators that you have pulled in the pivot table. So I'll say select a single legend for entire visualization. Then now you have to specify the, the exact legend. We have so many legends, but since we are looking at the EPI or immunization coverage, I'll select EPI coverage. Then the last part is whether you need to see the key, the legend key, because with these legends, the color coding always come with specified range. And of course, uh, the specified range are basically to tell you whether if it's performing well or not performing well. So depending on the configuration of the uh, this uh, API coverage legend, if you show the key that it will tell you red, if it's there is a red color, this red color means it's the values of what point to what point. If you have yellow, it, it will also show you with this yellow, it means we have the data for this particular range of values. So I, cl I will click show legend key. And if I click update, this is how the table now will look like. And this is the key, which is basically telling me if you see red, that means this is low and it's normally within zero to 70. If you this, see this uh, orange, it means it's in the middle not performing very well, but not performing very bad either. And the values are from 70 to 80. Again, high, performing a little bit well. It's this light green color. And of course, it tells you this is high, and it's from 80 to 90. And of course, the highest, the most performing is green. That compared to high. And it's, of course, from 90 to 100. And also we have this purple color, which is from 100 all the way, which is invalid. Why is it invalid? Because the coverages are looking at percentage. And we do not expect to have a percentage uh, beyond 100. I understand in some situations that could be possible, but realistically, most of the time, we have the highest percentage we could have is 100. So if you have more than 100, that is a, a flag, something, it could be something wrong, but rather you need to investigate further. Why, why do we have a percentage that is beyond 100? So you might need to investigate and see if it's okay. It might be true that in some situation you have that high percentage, but if it's not, then it's also a flag that uh, if something is wrong, then you need to look into it and make sure that it's fixed. So back to this table. Now with this color coding and the, uh, this key, the legend key, we could easily and quickly tell what indicators in what district are performing well, what are not performing well, and what or which district or which indicators are they are in the middle. They are not uh, uh, very bad, but either they're not very good. And of course, you could always sort again, just like the way we sorted other values. If you do that, to give you uh, all the values that are poor performing or in, in a, a ascending order or descending order, it all depends on how you want them to be sorted. Now, for instance, I need to further look uh, with this bad district. It seems that it's underperforming uh, within all three indicators, but probably it could, it could be not all the districts, but we have specific districts who are contributing much to poor performance of this uh, bad district. You could always put your cursor, then left click. If you left click, it will open up this change org unit tab. 
and you just click that and it will give you the two options whether you need to move upward or you need to further disaggregate this value into facility level but if it's only the facilities under the bad district because we are trying to drill down this information specifically for bad district so if you click facility then it's going to give you all the facilities within the bad district and of course uh, the contribution of each indicator towards towards uh, whatever percentage that we had in the bad district so from this if you were to investigate you'd say okay we have this kind of figure but the poor performance of this district probably it's not contributed by by parrot district because it doesn't have data at all so you could if you were to now start going into specific facilities, looking uh, for more information, you would skip Parrot because it doesn't have any contribution to the poor performance. So that is how you could, you could uh, play around with these uh, legends.